Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Pound and we are studying chapter 19 on ecology from BJU Biology's fourth edition. And in fact, today is the last video. So this is it for the videos. You can start studying for your test. Today we're going to take a look at section 19C on man in the biosphere and focus on section 19.6, pollution. So our objectives today are to define pollution and discriminate between biodegradable and non-biodegradable forms and recognize some forms of pollution. So what is pollution? Pollution is contamination of the environment with substances or factors that change the environment significantly. And we can contaminate any part of our environment. There is air pollution. Uh, produced by factories and cars and vehicles putting gases into the air. There is water pollution that's being emphasized here where we are dumping things into the water, whether they be chemicals, chemical waste, or any other things, just garbage thrown into the uh, water, uh, leakage of things like mercury and other chemicals. And we can also contaminate the soil or the ground, which then can then get into the water, groundwater. And so contaminating the soil with chemicals, with radiation, and with other things that make it unsuitable to use and can cause things like cancer and all sorts of problems. So pollutants that can be broken down by factors in the environment are called biodegradable. And in the background, we have a sewage treatment plant because sewage can be a pollutant, especially in water. Some examples are sewage, paper, and wood products. But these things are broken down by bacteria and other decomposers in the environment. And uh, especially sewage, I've witnessed before where there are sewage treatment plants there tends to be a lot of life where that sewage after it's treated is let out um, because it contains a lot of nutrients right there um, so that's uh, something that can happen when you release sewage also sewage we have to be careful of if we let raw sewage go into a body of water that can spread disease very easily in fact uh, you're not allowed to do it anymore, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of it is still there. The, all of the cottages around Chautauqua Lake, which is near here, used to dump their sewage right into the lake. They did not have septic systems. And so that was very unhealthy. And things like uh, diseases like polio can spread through untreated sewage. Now, pollutants that cannot be broken down by factors in the environment are called non-biodegradable. So they do not degrade, they do not break down. Some examples are glass, metal, insecticides, which include DDT and industrial waste. So uh, maybe you found beach glass before. That is a pollutant, okay? Even though it's pretty and we can make things out of it. Metal that's just rusting and laying around can pollute, as we see in the background here. Insecticides, and we'll talk about DDT more, and this industrial waste. It was, our rivers were full of industrial waste for a while, and we're killing the wildlife. And mercury can also build up and cause problems for us. Uh, if we eat fish that contain mercury. So all sorts of problems caused by pollution. Now, substances naturally found in an environment can become pollutants as well. For example, with water pollution, by using water to cool uh, <clears throat> turbines and at electric plants, and putting the warm water back into the environment, into the stream, can actually cause thermal water pollution. So that water is natural, but because we heated it up, it's causing a pollutant and making it unsuitable, perhaps, for some things to live in that environment. 
Another one is ozone. This is the triatomic form of oxygen that is found in the atmosphere. Now, the ozone layer, you've heard of that, is very important, and uh, it protects us from too much UV radiation from the sun. Now, you've probably heard that the ozone layer, which is over the south pole here that we can see, and uh, is depleted. And so there is a hole in the ozone layer there that they believe was caused by CFCs. And so they limited the use of CFCs and that hole does appear to be becoming smaller and healing. Um, so it is becoming smaller. However, they don't know if that is completely what caused the depletion of the ozone. They're also finding that it does tend to be cyclic, uh, that the hole does just get larger and smaller over time as well. But they have cut down on the use of CFCs and the hole does appear to be getting smaller. And ozone, like I said, in, uh, in the ozone layer, it's beneficial. But on the ground, it is not beneficial. In fact, it is a pollutant that is in when we have smog because what it does is it causes breathing problem for people who have asthma and other breathing difficulties. You may see on the news alerts that uh, ozone is high and that people sh who have breathing difficulties should stay indoors and not uh, overexert themselves because they will have problems breathing. So when it's on the ground, it is a pollutant. There's also the greenhouse effect. This is the phenomenon in which gases in the atmosphere prevent some of the sun's radiation from returning to space, thus maintaining a warm temperature on the Earth. And so that's why I have the greenhouses in the back because this happens and it happens naturally. You'll notice that on a cloudy night, it will stay warmer because the clouds, the water vapor in the air is holding the gases in. And there has been a trend. We have noticed global warming, which is the rise in temperature that has been noted over the last century on the earth. The temperatures have risen, uh, a little bit like a one or two degrees Celsius and this is of concern. Now there is a correlation between the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and global warming. So people have noticed this. This is why we're told to cut down on our carbon emissions, but that does not mean it is the cause. Uh, there is this correlation that people are running with, but we do not necessarily know that it is the cause. Uh, and carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, so that's why there is that concern. Uh, but another thing that I have that needs to be noted is we are still in somewhat of an ice age. And so it could be just that the earth is naturally warming up some more. There is also biological, now this is not related to the environmental factors. There is also biological magnification and you're going to have to add this to your note packet. Uh, this is the process that concentrates small quantities of a substance into larger quantities as it passes in a food chain. And my example is DDT. And DDT was a very effective insecticide and I believe it is still used in some areas of the world still. What happened with DDT is it would be sprayed to kill insects and then it would run into the water and fish would take that in through eating insects and through it just being in the water and it didn't really affect the fish. The fish were fine. It did not kill them. What ended up happening though is that the bald eagle and other raptors would eat the fish. And the DDT would build up in their bodies. It built up in the fish first, and then it would build up in the bodies of the bald eagles. And when the bald eagles laid their eggs, it made their shells very brittle and fragile. So they would sit on their eggs, and instead of incubating them and them hatching, they would break the eggs. And so it affected our bald eagle populations because it started out in the fish where it didn't bother them, but it accumulated 
in the bodies of the bald eagles and caused a problem. This also happens with heavy metals such as mercury. And this is why we are warned in some bodies of water not to eat too much fish from those bodies of water. There's a certain amount, and especially for pregnant women, because it can affect their unborn children more than the women themselves. So the same thing happens with substances like mercury. The mercury builds up in the bodies of the fish, and then we consume the fish, and it builds up in our body, but we eat so much fish, and we get more than the fish do, and it builds up on our bodies and can cause uh, mercury poisoning and other heavy metal poisonings in us. That's why there are warnings on certain types of fish because the, it builds up more in their fat than in other types of fish and in certain bodies of water because they contain more of those heavy metals. So our objectives today are to define pollution and discriminate between biodegradable and non-biodegradable forms and to recognize some forms of pollution. So don't forget your five questions in your notes and keep watching this video to answer the questions at the end.